Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. The Army-Navy game this past Saturday officially ended the college football regular season, and now it is time to get ready for bowl games. Now, as promised, I said when the regular season officially ended, because we still had three games left, that I would go back and look at our overall record and also break down how we did on each individual team, whether we got their record right, was close to getting it right, or just totally missed the mark. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to go through, look at our overall record that we've been keeping track of every week, and then we're going to look at the teams that did get right or were within one game. That's what I considered a successful prediction. If you remember, I said that way back when we started doing this. A successful prediction in my eyes was getting the team's record exactly right or missing it by just one game, whether that's due to an upset, injuries, whatever it may be. So we're going to break that down in this video. We're also going to share some comments that we've received uh, over the course of this season uh, and just have a little fun with it as well. Uh, so I'm going to break it down and explain to you how I calculated these, these records. So, on the season, after three games that we had left in the regular season, which we all got correct, by the way, I predicted UMass to lose to Florida International. We did predict Florida State. Of course, it'll beat Louisiana Monroe, and I did predict Army to beat Navy. That added three wins to our total for a 389-126 record. That bumps us up to 76% if you round, which met our goal of 75%. So, out of 515 games that we predicted this season, we got 76% of them right. Not too bad, especially considering we've started these predictions way back in the summer uh, in the month of June. Now, right here, I've got FBS. I did predictions for every single FBS team. Now, you only saw the Power 5 teams and then a couple of conference breakdowns. I think we missed out on doing the Conference USA and the Sun Belt, but yes, I, in fact, did do those, uh, even though those were some of the lower conferences. That means I got 71 out of 130 of these teams correct, exactly correct on their record, or was off by just one game, whether it was for better or for worse. Uh, 71 and 130, which equals out to 55%, which is fairly low, but once again, still not bad, considering we did all these predictions back in the summer. And then Power 5, just solely Power 5, which is what we've kept our focus on for the majority of the season, 39 out of 68 were exactly correct or off by one game. That equals out to 57%. So not too bad overall. Like I said, we've, we've dealt this season with injuries. We dealt with some major upsets, some teams doing much better than expected, teams doing much worse than expected. And keep in mind, I never changed these predictions as well. I kept them as I had them back in the summer. So uh, this is what it ended up equaling out to. 71 out of 130, exactly correct, or within one game uh, for the entire football, uh, college football world. And then 39 out of 68, correct, or within one game for just Power 5 conferences. And this does include Independence, Notre Dame, Army, uh, and UMass. Uh, and BYU as well. So that does include these right here. Uh, so now, as you can see here, right here are some of the teams, not all of them, but some of the teams that I did get exactly right. Now, before I start receiving comments, I know that I did not get every game right. I know that the one loss I predicted for Alabama was not to Auburn, it was to Florida State. I'm aware of that. However, I still predicted them to go 11-1. and one. So some of you might say that's not very accurate, the fact that I didn't get the exact game right, uh, but I still got 389 games right over the course of the season. So the majority of these teams, yes, their five losses for Kentucky or three losses for LSU did not come to the exact team that I predicted. I still got their record exactly right, though. That was the goal. Uh, and so these are just a handful of teams. These were three from the SEC. We have four from the Big Ten here, uh, a couple from the Pac-12, one from the ACC. And keep in mind, this is not all of them. This was a handful of them uh, that I had some of the more popular teams uh, that we received comments for over the course of the season. So overall, not too bad at all. Uh, throughout here. Now, I wanted to share a few comments I've received over the course of the season uh, for, for these teams, or just for one couple teams in particular. Uh, before I begin that, though, I know you all remember me doing this. Uh, I want to give out a shout out for the guys that have been there throughout the course of the season, um, major supporters, and, and there are countless others that I'm not going to list here, but Emperor of Rome, MavFam1, Big Fella 96, Ryan Leaf, Spaniard Prince, Johnny Bays, and Mitch Thayer all have been there throughout this season. Uh, I've been very supportive, and I appreciate you guys. I've had some good conversations with you guys, whether it's about your team uh, or just about the playoff or anything in particular. I've had a really great time talking to you guys. You all have been major supporters, and for the guys I haven't listed, I, I really appreciate you guys as well. And I appreciate all of you guys for watching, uh, subscribing, commenting, listening. Uh, none of this would be possible without you guys. But uh, in the end, this is some of the teams that we did get correct. One guy from Penn State, Eram Ahmed, said, this kid is a dumbass and doesn't know WTF he's talking about. Well, going 10-2 and two is exactly what I predicted for Penn State. Yes, of course, I probably did not get their losses exactly right. Still have them going 10-2. and two. Now, the majority of these comments that are to follow are from Michigan, who went 8-4 and four this year. And that is, of course, what I predicted back in the summer, going 8-4. and four. 
Uh, they, Michigan's losses this year were to Ohio State, uh, Michigan State, and Penn State, as well as Wisconsin. Uh, those were their four losses. I think I had all those correct. Uh, I did. I predicted them to lose to Florida. I did not predict them to lose uh, to Michigan State. So I had a couple mess, messed up there. Uh, but YRN Breezy says you clearly haven't seen how good Michigan's young players are. Eleven and one, off by three games there. Uh, Pull P U L B says you have them losing every big game they play. I can't wait to come back to this after the season. LOL. I haven't heard from Pull in like three months since he commented this. Hasn't been back yet. Wonder where he is. Uh, Logic. That's the guy's username. Logic. First thing he said was, "I hope he dies of AIDS." It's pretty harsh. Jeez. And then he says, who the F is this dumb F? You know what that means. Michigan will have experience by the end of the season and will beat Wisconsin and Penn State. Well, I wonder how those went for logic there. Skyler Nation said, this dude dumb if he think Michigan going lose for a game. Wow. Wow. I mean, jeez. Well, they did lose four games. And I, if you go back and watch my Michigan video, I said I credit a lot of that to an experience. You know, having losing 10 defensive starters uh, from a very solid team last year, it didn't make sense for Michigan to go 10-2, 11-1, or anything like that. Jim Harbaugh's a great coach. I expect them to be good next year, uh, especially with the influx of transfers they've got coming. They're going to have Shea Patterson coming in at quarterback, could potentially take over. Uh, but, I mean, 8-4 I thought was extremely reasonable for the Wolverines and ended up uh, working out. Nate Connor said, you don't know football. You're right. 389 and 126. Don't know anything about football. Killa TJ11 says, Your name is ridiculous. We have four hard games this year, and you think we'll lose every one. Yes, you did, Killa TJ. True Maze and Blue says, You accomplished nothing in this video in my eyes. It makes no sense. I accomplished predicting Michigan's record exactly right. And then one other thing, the one other comment, a couple other comments I got was Georgia Tech. They're not listed here. Georgia Tech went 5-6 and six this season. I had them going 6-6. Six and six. Now, keep in mind, they had a game canceled against Central Florida due to the hurricanes we had early in the season. Georgia Tech could have easily lost that game after watching the way Central Florida has been playing this year. Uh, but we don't know what would happen. They could have lost and gone 5-7, and seven, could have won and gone 6-6. Six and six. Either way, I was going to get the record exactly right or off by one game, which would have added this total. Brad Brooks says, you're giving the stupidest reasoning. Georgia Tech won't go 6-6. Six and six. Work on your stuff. We've been working on it all season. think it turned out pretty good. Andrew Westmoreland says Georgia Tech's not going to go 6-6, six and six, bro. Book it. Hmm. Well, they could have gone worse. 6-6 six and six might have been fairly generous. Uh, overall, though, a very, very solid college football season. I've been very pleased with the results. I really appreciated you guys, uh, all your comments and your likes uh, and subscribers. Uh, we're hoping to crack 1,000 here by the new year uh, as we get started with these bold predictions. So we're getting really excited about that. Hopefully we'll crack the 1,000 subscriber mark. Uh, and I know, like I said, these teams here, the 71 and 130, 39 and 68, correct or within one game? I do know that I did not get every uh, loss correct. I also know that I missed the mark on a lot of teams this season. This is just a handful of teams I got right or very close to getting right. I know I missed the mark on Georgia. I know I missed the mark on Iowa State. Purdue, who did a great job this season. Baylor who I had going 6-6, six and six, ended up going 1-11. California, who I had, go, had going 1-11 and surprised me and probably a couple other people by going 5-7 and seven, almost making a bowl game uh, in a year that I thought was going to be a major rebuilding year for them. So I know I missed a lot, of guys, a lot of teams this year, missed a lot of games this year, missed 126 of them. But no one's perfect. That's the fun in it is to see what happens. That's the fun that we have in college football. So I'm aware that I missed a lot. I'm aware that I'm going to miss a lot down the road uh, into next year. About, but you got to keep in mind, a lot of other experts or other analysts miss a lot too. So overall, for summer predictions that we started back in June and carried on it all the way throughout the season, 76% of those out of 515 is not too bad. So I've been very pleased. Uh, these are our final season standings here. This is our final records, final predictions for every uh, college football team, for every game that we predicted in the Power Five. This is it. And uh, that kind of sends a wrap for uh, Season 1 of the Gridiron Expert. Now, keep in mind, we are going to have bowl predictions coming up. Bowl games start Saturday. I think we have a slate of five games on Saturday and a couple of good ones at that. So make sure you keep your eye out for that. We are starting bowl predictions this week. More than likely, the video will come out Thursday and Friday, and we are predicting every single bowl game. Analysis and predictions, who we think is going to win those games, all the way into the college football playoff, and then, of course, ending with the national championship on January 8th. So get ready for that. It's going to be exciting. 
So keep your eyes out for our bowl predictions that are coming out. But for the regular season, these are your final records. So thank you guys for all your support. Please continue to watch, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.